All right, everybody, welcome to Hatha practice today. I want to give a little demo. I'm thinking that we're going to eventually make our way into Palau, and I like to show it with props because you do have them handy at home. So Palau is, I would say, mo the safest with a nice blanket folded up. And when you lay on the blanket, you actually bring your shoulders flush to the very edge that your head and neck is hanging off. I'm just going to demonstrate that. So if you're interested in Palau, you have your blanket or some type of little cushion, and then you bring your shoulders so that they are just flush with the top of your blanket and your neck and head is off. When you get into plow, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can have your hands on the sides and then just kind of roll back using the strength of your core. Now this is, I would say like a baby plow where most of my weight is still in my shoulder blades. It's not really on the base of my neck. Um, so this is a nice variation, especially if you know that you have things going on in your upper back. Otherwise the full version, I'm not quite ready to do this because I just had supper. <laughs> the full version is starting to bring your feet towards the floor and then the weight is more at the base of the neck. Once you're in a plow, I want you to keep your focal point straight up towards the ceiling because we are putting pressure there. I do not want you to look right to left. So this is our plow and you can tuck your shoulders and your shoulder blades underneath. There's the option in this to interlace the hands and press the triceps down into the floor. That's going to challenge and go a little deeper. Also, you can work on straightening the legs. Plow is like a huge posterior chain opening. It's going to hit everything. And then from the plow, you have the option with your hands on the back to come into shoulder stand. So this is our shoulder stand. And if you have kind of a saggy, saggy butt and shoulder stand, you are striving to engage your glutes and push your hips and thighs forward, straightening the legs, pointing toes. That's our shoulder stand. If you're like, no way, that's not happening. That's totally fine. I'm gonna have you come into forward fold. So what we're doing in a plow is basically opening the whole posterior chain, calves, hamstrings, low back, middle back, upper back. If plow does not feel like it's gonna work for you, you can do that plow where you have the weight just on the shoulder blades, or you can come into seated forward fold and you're gonna hit the same parts of your body. So that's the variations. All right. How's that sound? Okay. Again, if you have neck injuries, I do not recommend plow. So just an FYI about that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. And I'm trying a little bit different music tonight. The music I'm gonna be using is from YouTube. And we're just gonna see how it goes. Let's make our way onto our mat, find child's pose. If you do have blocks or straps handy, you can grab them as well. In your child's pose, you're bringing the knees wide, big toes come in to touch, softening the chest and the belly towards the floor more of a diamond shape with the elbows. This helps to relax the shoulders and the upper back. As you settle to your mat, you're connecting with the most sacred of all spaces, the space between you and your own breath. Drawing a breath in through the nose, and out through the nose. Striving for an even breath in, and an even breath out. If you're wanting to build a little more heat in your practice, you can engage with Ujjayi breath, Ujjayi breath, 
We're breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, but then there's a slight constriction in the back of the throat. The tongue rests at the roof of the mouth right behind the top teeth. So as you breathe, there is a constriction in the back of the throat and the breath becomes more audible, more oceanic in quality. This is a breath that is going to bring more heat into your practice. As you breathe, we're bringing our attention or awareness not only to our physical body, but our emotional body, our mental bodies as well. Taking the time to really connect, notice and observe what is there in this moment. Please keep in mind that your yoga practice is always your own. You are free to change it, to modify it, to challenge it in any way that feels needed or necessary. Let's take one more breath in here. And on your exhale, walking the hands over to the right side of your mat. Hands can stay parallel or the left hand can rest on top of the right hand. Physically, we're looking to make more space in the left side body through the rib cage down to the hip. Breath in, exhale, walking the hands all the way now over to the left side of the mat. Finding that space in the right side body, really anchoring the right glute towards the heel. And as we invite in this little bit of movement, the start of our practice, we're allowing ourselves to really settle in, come into the space. Breath in through the nose. Exhale, returning the hands back to center. Before we really start with our asana practice, we'll join in collective intention. The intention I'm offering you in this moment is around love and grievances. It's a very simple statement that love holds no grievances. Take a moment and roll that around in your mental, emotional, and physical body. And see if there's any grievances that you're holding on with situations or individuals. During 
your practice this evening, we're inviting a little bit of love into that space. Last breath in and breath out. Inhale, shifting forward, first to table, drawing the knees back under the hips, and then straight to downward dog, tucking the toes, lifting the tailbone towards the ceiling. Feel free to always invite movement into your first downward dog or settle into your stillness. In your downward dog, you're noticing the weight or the pressure in the hands. Fingers are spread nice and wide like starfish. Consciously pressing down into the tops of the palms, out through the fingertips. Starting to draw the chest and the belly a little closer towards the thighs. Drawing the navel in and up and knitting the front ribs back together. On your inhale, bending your knees and lifting your head, looking at the space between your hands, holding right here. For more challenge in this, you can sink the knees a little closer towards the floor, that's optional, or they can be higher away from the mat. Inhaling through the nose, pressing into the tops of the palms. Exhale, down dog. Lifting the hips. Breath in. And breath out. Inhale, bending the knees, lifting the head, holding here once more. Really scooping the belly, keeping the elbow soft so there's no hyperextension. And on your exhale, ragdoll pose. Feet stepping behind the hands or as wide as the mat, fully letting go of head, neck, and shoulders. Always have the option for stillness or movement here, maybe shifting side to side or front to back. Possibly a little yes and no, nod of the head. Breath in, exhale, heel toe the feet, either hips with or all the way together, your choice. Spread those toes nice and wide, anchor into the four corners of the feet. Inhale, halfway lift. Taking the shoulder blades together and down, crown of the head growing long. Scooping the belly, knitting the front ribs back together striving for that flat back. Now you can have your hands down onto the mat if you want, as long as you can really maintain that kind of flat back and open chest, taking the shoulder blades together and down. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Let's do that once more. Inhale, halfway lift. Stay here and breathe, refine that form. The knees can be as soft as they need to be, creating space in the hamstrings, or maybe you start to straighten the legs and engage your thighs. Breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, bending into the knees, hands rise to the ceiling. In your chair pose, you always have 
lots of choice. Hands can come to heart center if you want, or even to the hips. Otherwise, the arms are extended out, shoulders soften, down, back. Belly scoops, anchor into the four corners. Bulk of the weight is in the heels. Breath in. Exhale, go deeper. Think a little bit lower in your chair. Lower than maybe your mind wants to go. Activating either that even breath in or ujjayi breath. Constricting the back of the throat. Listening for that more audible breath. Breath in. Exhale, forward fold, all the way down. Holding and breathing here. Breath in. Breath out. Inhale, chair pose. Bending back into the knees, really grounding down. Let's go even lower if you want to. Maybe the thighs start to reach like they're gonna be parallel to the mat. Scoop the belly. Take your toes and grab at the floor. Thumbs reach for the ceiling. Breath in. Breath out. Inhale, mountain pose, stepping all the way up, straightening the legs, hands come along the sides of the body. Breath in and breath out. On your exhale, draw the hands to heart center. We're stepping the right foot back. Feet are gonna be about hips width and then we're squaring the hip. So that means the right hip, I'm just gonna turn so you can see. That means the right hip is reaching forward, left hip is pulling back. We're striving for the hips to be even and balanced. Pressing equally into both feet, squeezing thighs, hands at heart center to start. Breath in, breath out. Inhale, reaching the hands high. Exhale, grabbing opposite elbows behind the back. So scoop the hands down and around, grab for opposite elbows. Keep squaring the hips, inhale. Exhale, pyramid, you're hinging at the hip, going just far enough forward that you really start to feel the hamstring opening in the left leg. We are squaring hips and shoulders even with the mat to the floor. So in your pyramid, you can be level with your mat, you can be up taller, you can come down even deeper. What we're looking for is that physical focal point behind the left leg, hamstring. If you're feeling knee joint, just go ahead and soften the knee. And then from there, we are refining the form. So the feet are anchoring down, toes grab at the mat, engaging thighs, scoop the belly, knit the rib cage, drop the shoulders away from the ears. Breath in, breath out. On your next inhale, releasing the hands, sweeping the hands up towards the ceiling for this high pyramid. From high pyramid, we're gonna transition right into one-legged chair. So you're gonna bend into your left knee, breath in, exhale, right foot comes on top of left knee, and I'll turn so everybody can just see what I'm doing. Hold it here to start. This might feel like enough if it is. Great. If you're wanting more, you can start bending into the left knee for this one-legged chair. 
top foot stays flexed. Ideally, we're trying to get the ankle and the foot to actually overhang on the thigh. Hands option can be at heart center or they can stay strong and lifted. Now in this one legged chair, no need to go in super deep because we're gonna come back here again. So just find a place where you're feeling some opening. Hold and breathe, choose your focal point. Bring your attention back to our intention of making space in any grievances that might we might be holding against people or situations. Breathing love into those areas. Breath in, breath out. Inhale, mountain, release the right foot, sweep the hands down to the side, anchor in, feet hips width, or all the way together, your choice. Breath in, exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, step the left foot back. We're setting up for pyramid on the left side. Again, hips are squared, so the left hip is reaching forward, right hip is pulling back. Knees can be soft, otherwise they're strong and straight. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, grabbing opposite elbows behind the back. Breath in, press the feet down into the floor. Exhale, pyramid, hinging forward. Remember, we're looking for that opening behind the right leg. That's kind of one of our physical focal points here. Squaring hips and shoulders. So you really want to notice if, especially your left hip, notice if your left hip is trying to like reach and open towards the ceiling. Take it and square it, turn it towards the floor. When you do that, you might have to soften the right knee. Breath in, breath out. Take the time, refine your form, really press into the four corners of each foot. Engaging thighs, unless you have the knees soft, scoop the belly, rib cage, move shoulders away from ears. On your next inhale, transitioning to that one-legged chair, inhale, releasing the hands, coming back up first. <sighs> Exhale it out. Breath in, softening knees, preparing. Exhale, step up, one leg a chair. Left ankle comes on top of right knee. Foot is flexed. This might be enough, stay here. If you're wanting more, sit down. Remember, we're not looking for the deepest one legged chair. Just that space where we're feeling some openings. Breath in, breath out. Anchor in to that even count. Three in through the nose, three out through the nose. On your next inhale, mountain pose. Standing up, releasing the left foot, planting it securely down onto the mat. From your mountain, take the left leg, I'm just gonna turn, take the left leg, cross it over the right leg. Inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Hinging at the hip, diving forward. Now in this forward fold, you might have your hands on blocks, you might not. Noticing physical sensation.
Inhale, reverse dive. Sweep the hands all the way back up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's uncross. Find your mountain for a moment. And then cross with the right leg. Right leg over left. Inhale, reach the hands down, around, and up. Exhale, forward fold, hinging at the hip, lead with the chest all the way down. Always feel free to put your hands on blocks here if hands down to the mat feels like too much. And then I want you to notice, without judgment, how does the side feel compared to the other? Inhale, mountain pose, reverse dive, sweep the hands all the way back up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's uncross and find mountain. Feet hips width or together. Inhale, reach the hands down around and up to the ceiling. Exhale, forward fold, softening the knees, scooping the belly on the way down to the mat. Here at the floor, we're gonna intensify our forward fold. Some options are to bring your hands to the backs of your calves. You can come down to the shins. If you have the mobility, I want you to try and match your forearms to the backs of your calves. Otherwise, you're just grabbing anywhere in the backs of the legs. Fully release head, neck, and shoulders. So think ragdoll pose, like you're really letting your head go. And then begin to straighten the legs as much as you can. Lifting your tailbone, pressing the chest and the belly into the thighs. You should really feel the hamstrings here to open. And they might even shake a little bit, that's okay. So you're striving to straighten the knees as much as you can. Lifting tailbone, pressing chest and belly into the tops of the thighs. Let go of head, neck, and shoulders. No weight in the head. Breath in, breath out. A little bit more, last inhale. Exhale, and soften. Go ahead, release the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Anchoring into the four corners of the feet as you rise up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Weight loading the right leg. Let's take the left ankle to the top of the knee. We're transitioning back to our one-legged chair, knowing that if this feels like enough right here, I want you to stay. Otherwise, on your exhale, you're bending into that right knee and sitting the hips down. This time, feel free to go a little lower, a little deeper. Playing around with your edge. In this one-legged chair, keep scooping belly, rib cage, softening shoulders. If you want more for your upper body, release the hands high. Hold and breathe here. Keep holding and breathing. Check out everybody. Really nice, really nice. Top foot stays flex. That's just gonna help with knee and ankle alignment. Awesome job, everybody. <laughs> A little bit more. Last inhale. Last exhale, sinking the hips even more if you want to. Inhale, mountain pose, release, and the hands up. And then back to heart center. 
go ahead and weight load the left leg. Take the right ankle on top of the knee, foot is flexed. Staying up tall or sitting down. Trying to go even lower here. Feel your left foot. The bulk of the weight is in the heel, but I want your toes engaged. Your toes grabbing at the mat. Hands at heart center or lifted. Breath in, breath out. Checking in with our intention. Of where do you hold grievances in your body? Allowing your breath, your physical movement, the creation of space here. Breathing love into those spaces. Breath in, breath out. Last inhale. Exhale, sinking down even more, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Lift your thumbs once more. Inhale, mountain, release. Set that down, shake that out. Back to your mountain, cross the left leg over the right. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Use your blocks as needed. Breath in, breath out. Inhale, mountain pose, reverse dive all the way up. Exhale, release the left foot. Keep the hands high. Inhale, recross, right leg over left. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Taking the time to notice right versus left, but also we've been here before. So how does the second time around feel? Inhale, mountain pose, reverse dive all the way up. Exhale, uncross and bring the hands back to heart center. We're gonna transition into our one-legged chair once more with the option to go into one-legged forward fold. So that's optional if you want it. Let's weight load the right leg. Take the left ankle on top. Remember you're invited to stay here or sit down. Find your depth, keeping that chest lifted, scooping belly, softening shoulders. Breath in, if you want, on your exhale, one-legged forward fold. So you're bringing the hands down, maybe to blocks, or maybe all the way to the mat. And then with your right knee, you might be striving to straighten and engage the thigh, depending on how open or closed your hamstrings are this evening. Or you might need to have a really generous bend yet in your right knee. You can also kind of play around with what happens if I bend my knee a little more and my hands are on the floor. What happens if I straighten my leg? What do I feel? What sensation am I noticing? Inhale, rising back to one-legged chair if possible. Exhale. 
exhale just to settle into your form and on your inhale mountain pose release then the hands high put the left foot down readjust the feet hands come to heart center let's weight load the left leg take the right ankle on top of the knee option to stay here option to sit down in that one-legged chair finding all the little pieces first really grounding into the left foot scooping belly rib cage softening shoulders option to stay or option for that one-legged forward fold hands on blocks or to the mat Letting go fully of the head, neck, and shoulders as much as you can. And then playing around with bending just a little bit into that left knee, or maybe straightening. On your inhale, float back, one-legged chair. Rooting down into your left foot, upper body rising. One-legged chair, inhale, mountain. Reach the hands high, set the right foot down with control. Gonna wiggle those legs out. Breath in. And exhale, hands come to heart center. If you are going to be trying plow this evening, go ahead, grab your blanket. If you've got it, if you don't have it, that's okay too. And then bring your blanket kind of in the middle of your mat. We're gonna have a seat on the edge of the blanket to start. Before we get into plow, since plow is such a big neck and upper back stretch, we're gonna tuck the chin to the chest Tuck the chin. Option if you want to bring the hands to the back of the head and apply some pressure. If you're applying pressure, just be very mindful of how deep you want to go. in and exhale slowly release now as we go into our plow I'm gonna go I'm gonna cue plow to shoulder stand you can take both of those or you can just do one or the other whatever you choose though I want you to keep your focal point up to the ceiling please do not look right to left because you are putting pressure at the base of the neck if you do not like plow pose and you know it's not a good choice for your body then I want you to come into this forward fold draping the upper body over the lower body you're going to get a lot of the same benefit as the plow so that's your choice for that if you are moving into plow lying on your blanket bring the shoulders flush with the very top or the edge of your blanket so that the neck and the head is hanging off we're gonna lift up into a bridge. So anchor into the feet to lift up into your bridge. See if you can come up so high that now you can wedge the hands underneath the hips. And this may or may not work for you. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You can get into your plow any way that works for you. You can even use a little bit of momentum. In your bridge, drawing one knee at a time towards the forehead. This is kind of plow prep where you just hold here. Your hands are kind of in your middle back area. And then you have the option to extend the legs behind you. And then once you're there, I forgot to mention that you can put your feet on a block. So if your feet don't easily connect with the floor, and many people's don't, that's okay. You could put a block underneath your feet. 
settle into wherever you're going to be. And then really tuck the shoulders and the shoulder blades under the body. Choice here. You can interlace the fingers and press the triceps down into the floor, into your blanket. Start with a soft knee and then begin to straighten. And like we did in those forward folds. Also have the option to have the hands on the middle or even the upper back and kind of gently, gentle pressure for a little bit more depth. Option to stay in your plow or option to bring the hands to that middle back and go into shoulder stand, sending the legs up towards the ceiling, squeezing thighs, pointing toes. There's a light engagement of the glutes here, so you're like pushing your hips and thighs forward. because we've put the effort into setting up this plow with our blanket and everything, I want you to stay or transition in between your shoulder stand and your plow, kind of as much as you would like. I'm gonna kind of check out everybody if I can see anyone. Nice, Melissa. I want you to bring energy in the feet, squeezing thighs, pointing toes. So when I say energy in the feet, you can choose to either point or flex. Totally up to you. Looks good, Kareen. If you wanted to, you could walk the hands down towards your neck for more intensity. So the hands would walk down towards the floor on the body. Carolyn, that looks good. Nice. And then if you have the legs extended, you're really squeezing and trying to straighten the knees as much as you can. That's gonna go really deep into that whole posterior chain, which we've been opening. And awesome, Megan's gone back into a forward fold, which is nice. So if you've tried a little bit of plow and shoulder stand and you're kind of done or you didn't want it, go back to that seated forward fold. Stay here as long as you would like. And then when you're ready to come out, use your hands on your low back, kind of as a guide to help you come out really nice and controlled vertebrae by vertebrae. And then once you are out and no pressure or rush, if you want to stay, let's take a forward fold together, breath in through the nose, exhale extending over the legs, tucking the chin. Again, you're always softening the knees as much as you need to. Breath in, and breath out. Last inhale, exhale slow. And go ahead and set your blanket aside. We're going to transition into um, cow's face, just the legs. In cow's face, it can be helpful to have uh, a pillow or a cushion underneath the hip. So if you're wanting that, go ahead and sit on the edge. Bending the knees, planting the feet on the floor. Let's take the right foot underneath the left knee and bringing the foot back towards the hip. And then the left leg crosses over. Ideally, we want both sit bones to be in contact with the floor and we're striving for our knees to be stacked. You can see my knees are not close to being stacked and that's okay, but that's kind of what we're striving for is the knees being stacked. Inhale, lifting the chest, feet are flexed. If this feels like enough, you're gonna stay right here. If you're wanting more, you're gonna go forward, hinging at the hip keeping the chest open, widening through the collarbones, shoulder blades together and down. Okay. 
And then for more depth, if you feel like you want that, you're pressing the belly into the side of the left thigh and lifting your tailbone, kind of like we did in that intense forward fold. Same movement here. You're finding your own opening and then softening the rest of the body around that. Breath in, exhale, slowly release. Let's uncross, plant the feet back on the floor, and then we'll switch to the opposite side. Now, left leg comes underneath, right knee, right foot crosses over. Anchor down into the sits bone. So for me, there's a tendency for my left heel to wedge itself underneath my glute and then my sits bones are not equally on the mat and I'm leaning more on my left side. So notice if that's true for you or not. Adjust, flexing the feet, breath in, lifting chest. Exhale to hinge forward if you're wanting more intensity. slowly release on cross the legs planting the feet on the floor inhale sit up really nice and tall let's transition into a boat pose before we come onto the back hands can be on the backs of the thighs or along the sides you choose lifting one leg and then the other zipping up the inner thighs opening through chest and collarbones options for this are to let go of the legs or to even straighten the legs up towards the ceiling if you're wanting that challenge. Hold it here and breathe. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Exhale, slowly release, bring the feet down to the mat. Inhale, sit up really tall, scoop the belly in the pelvic floor. Exhale, rolling down with control. All the way to the mat. We're gonna invite a twist in. And we're just gonna soften this music a little bit more. at the very bottom and press your feet into the earth lift the hips up shift the hips now to the left set them back down hug the knees and then drift the legs over to the right throw a twist variations you can have the arms extended you can cactus the arms or even take the right hand and gently press down on the outside of the thigh in exhale slowly release 
bring the feet back to the earth. Little baby bridge to reset. Little baby bridge, lifting up, lengthening the tailbone towards the earth. And then we'll lift the hips up, shift them now to the right, hug the knees, and float to the left. Breath in, and breath out, last inhale, exhale, slowly release, bring the knees back to center, little baby bridge once again, just to reset everything, lifting the hips, and then lengthening the tailbone towards the heels as you lower down vertebrae by vertebrae, hugging both knees to the chest, and coming into happy baby, bringing the knees wider than the rib cage, lifting the feet up, grabbing hamstrings, shins, maybe big toes. You can always invite any movement that you'd like into your happy baby. And then after you've had enough of happy baby, come into Shavasana. Bring our Shavasana, I'm gonna invite silence. By pausing our music. Get really nice and comfortable in your Shavasana. You can always grab a sweatshirt, socks, maybe even a pillow or a blanket. As you settle into your mat, I want you to first notice just how the physical body feels, especially the lower half. We did a lot for our lower body today. from our body reconnecting with your breath. It's now a softer breath in through the nose and a softer breath out through the nose. And with every exhale, you're feeling yourself a little heavier, sink a little deeper into the mat. Now rest your awareness in your heart center.
from your awareness and your heart center. Noticing any grievances that are still holding on in our physical, emotional, or mental bodies. Maybe there has been room to shift or create space. Maybe there hasn't, and that's okay too. Breath in, and then your exhale, coming into fetal child's pose. There's a moment here to pause and allow for transition. Breath in and exhaling into easy seated. Blender practice by bringing the hands together at heart center. Let's rub the palms, building a little heat. And then taking the very base of the palm, bringing it over the eyes just to help seal and close our practice. Breath in, exhale, keeping the eyes closed, release the hands to heart center at prayer. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste.